What would be your dream specs for a monitor? <laughs> like sure, some people are gonna say 1000 Hertz, 8K, whatever. But realistically, I think 4K at 240 Hertz on a 32 inch OLED panel is pretty much dream spec territory. So yeah, this right here could be the end game monitor for a lot of people. And it's easy to see why these specs are so desirable. You don't have to compromise on anything. First person shooters, watching movies, video editing, these specs allow you to do it all and at a very high level. Now the Alienware model I have here is among the first to use this new QD OLED panel that has these insane specs. It's made by Samsung Display. But there's also a competing W OLED panel from LG Display that has pretty much the same specs. There's no monitor with the LG panel available yet, but it's gonna be interesting to see how these two panels compare. For now, this QD OLED panel is pretty unique. And I have to say that I really enjoy this big, super crisp OLED panel. It looks just insanely good. But yeah, if we were hoping for the ultimate, no compromises monitor, you're probably gonna be a bit disappointed. Don't get me wrong, this is one of the best and most high-end monitors on the market right now. But you definitely shouldn't buy it blindly and think it will be the best monitor for each and every use case under all conditions. Because that's not what it is. As gorgeous as this panel looks, it has a few little drawbacks and the Alienware AW3225QF specifically has a few more little oddities you should know about. But let's talk about the good stuff first. The response times for instance. It's on the same level as all the other OLEDs, but that doesn't make it any less impressive. I mean, this is a 4K monitor that easily beats dedicated eSports monitors when it comes to response times. That's less than half of the average response time of the XL2566K on the right, which, you know, is a pretty serious eSports monitor. And comparing both side by side, fast moving objects look just as good on this 4K panel as on the 360Hz XL2566K, if not even better. Super impressive for a 4K monitor. Up until recently, this is what a good 4K monitor looked like. It has a typical good 144Hz IPS panel, but this new 4K OLED panel is just on a whole other level. Really only the 360Hz QD OLED looks even better. Now, I've spent quite a few hours playing Valorant and Fortnite on both the 360Hz 1440p OLED, as well as on this 240Hz 4K OLED. And yeah, the 360Hz OLED truly is amazing for FPS games, but this 240Hz 4K panel, honestly, isn't far behind. I mean, talking about playing sweaty FPS games on a 4K panel seems a bit strange, but times have changed. This monitor is insanely fast, and even at the native 4K resolution, I'm easily getting 5 to about 700 FPS here in Valorant on a 4080 with competitive low settings. Fortnite is a bit more taxing, but with DLSS set to quality, the FPS rallied it below 240. And that's more than just playable. Sure, a 4080 is no slouch, but I guess it's fair to assume that people who buy a monitor like this have a decent graphics card to pair it with. And yeah, you can always lower the rendering resolution in-game if you need even more FPS in certain games. The display lag is also low at just 2.6 milliseconds. So yeah, there's really nothing anymore that would keep you from playing competitive games on a 4K monitor and dominate the lobbies. Now unfortunately, this monitor isn't really well optimized for lower frame rate, variable refresh rate gaming, which is a bit of a shame on a 4K monitor specifically. The response times still are great at lower refresh rates, like here at 120Hz for instance, so that's not the issue, but it's adaptive sync that's not working as good as it should be. I mean, a lot of people are probably gonna play graphically intensive single player titles on a monitor like this, and yeah, chances are you won't get frame rates above 240 FPS in those titles at 4K, so adaptive sync would come in clutch to prevent tearing. But unfortunately, with adaptive sync turned on, we get quite a bit of flickering, so adaptive sync is basically unusable. Even an FPS cap at 230 combined with a very stable frame rate don't help. Now, adaptive sync flickering is something most OLEDs suffer from, so this is probably not something that's going to be fixed with an easy firmware update. But yeah, it's probably still worth mentioning that Nvidia stated on their website that this monitor needs a yet-to-be-released GPU driver for G-Sync. So there is a small chance that Adaptive Sync will work fine in the future, or at least a bit better than it does now. After all, the AW3225QF got certified by Nvidia as G-Sync compatible, which usually pretty much guarantees a flicker-free performance. But yeah, right now it's actually the second OLED I've tested that got this certification but still struggles with Adaptive Sync flickering. So I don't know, maybe Nvidia loosened the certification criteria for OLEDs. 
or they just have too many of these little G-Sync stickers lying around. Now the flickering aside, games just look amazing on this panel. It's really no surprise, but yeah, a high resolution OLED makes everything you throw at it look great. Now the 4K resolution also fixes one of the most annoying issues of OLED monitors, which is color fringing. Text and high contrast graphics usually look worse on OLED monitors than on a typical LCD, and that's thanks to the unusual pixel structure that most OLED panels use. This panel uses a triangular RGB structure as well, just like the previous generations of QD OLED. The layout has improved a bit, but the subpixels are still arranged in a triangular pattern, and that causes green colored fringes on top and magenta on the bottom on a lot of text and graphics. However, this is almost a non issue with this monitor. Sure, the colored fringes are still there when you look super closely, but from a normal viewing distance, the text basically looks perfect. And that's thanks to the much higher pixel density that this panel has. Previously, about 110 pixels per inch was the limit, but this one has 139 ppi. Side by side, it's pretty easy to see how much more coarse the 27 inch 1440p panel on the right really is. So yeah, 4K basically solves the color fringing issues of older panels. And on a side note, thanks to the much smaller pixels, the pixel shifting feature that most OLEDs have is much less noticeable on this monitor than on a lower resolution panel. So for older panels, 4K actually has some unexpected benefits besides just having a higher resolution. From a pure quality point of view, I really wouldn't mind using the 3225QF as a main monitor for writing or reading text. It's still a bit questionable though if you actually should use an OLED monitor for productivity stuff. I mean a few hours of Word and Excel here and there are probably fine, but if you were to use it for a 9 to 5 office job, an OLED monitor likely won't last you very long. But yeah, that aside, this is a fantastic monitor for all kinds of productivity tasks from pure image quality POV. Now, before we continue, a word about CookTech, who sponsored this portion of the video. CookTech started their journey in 2016 as an OEM for charging accessories and have since joined forces with CMI. There's a good chance you're already familiar with their products as CookTech has been making power banks and chargers for brands like Xiaomi and LG, and they've shipped out a few hundred million charging products already. Their very own lineup of charging accessories combines the latest tech with a clean design. The PB200P is a 20,000 mAh power bank that is compact, well built, and supports both power delivery and quick charge 3.0. It can charge your phone or laptop with up to 100 watts or even 120 watts with compatible Xiaomi phones. With its two USB C and one USB A port, this powerhouse can charge multiple devices at once at high speeds. If you're in a hurry, you can recharge the PB200P to half of its capacity in just about half an hour, giving you enough energy to charge your iPhone more than once during the day. Of course, you need a beefy charger to quick charge your power bank, but CookTech has you covered with a multi-port GAN charger that can charge your devices with up to 65 watts. If this sounds good to you, check out CookTech's full range of power banks and chargers in the link in the description down below. Back to the video. Now, what's a bit annoying about this monitor is the automatic brightness limiting that AMware decided to make a mandatory feature. Switching or resizing windows can cause visible jumps in brightness, depending on the content. And it's not always intuitive as to when this monitor decides to dim down or turn up the brightness. See, the typical white window on a black background test shows a rather constant brightness of almost 260 nits across most window sizes. And that's great, but not representative for the peak brightness we're getting with real content. This is what happens when we swap the black background for different shades of grey. This makes the monitor think this is a normal use case and not a test suite. And suddenly, there's a pretty significant drop in nits for anything but an almost black or an almost white background, so for anything that's not considered a test. So the peak brightness you're actually going to see most of the time on the desktop or in-game is closer to 210 nits. For some reason, the creator modes don't have this weird ABL behavior, so if you don't mind using the sRGB mode, that's an option. Now, I've observed the same behavior on the Alienware AW2725DF, and I've already talked to Dell since that review. And according to Dell, this is normal behavior and caused by the multi-logo detection feature, which aims to increase the lifespan of the panel by dimming the screen. Unfortunately, at the moment, there's no option to turn the multi-logo detection feature off, which really is a shame, because it's rather obvious that the logo detection is way too sensitive and not just triggered by logos, but whenever there's something bright on the screen. I mean, sure, this protects the panel, but it also cripples the peak brightness with real-world content when there's not even a logo inside. And as Tim from Hardware Unboxed pointed out, on the competing models by ASUS and MSI, the logo detection is an optional feature you can choose to enable or disable in the monitor's menu, which is a huge plus. Now in HDR, the logo detection feature seems to be less active, which is good to see. 
At least the Display HDR True Black mode shows a smooth decline of the peak brightness the higher the background level gets, which is the normal dimming behavior we'd expect to see from an OLED panel. So no additional logo detection weirdness. And as Dell confirmed, the multi-logo detection feature is disabled in this mode. The HDR Peak 1000 mode though seems to be affected as it shows some unusual brightness dips. But the dimming is less extreme than what we saw in SDR. Still a bit unfortunate as Peak 1000 is the HDR mode you probably want to use. Only this mode reaches the maximum peak brightness, which makes the HDR experience just much more enjoyable. Small highlights and scenes like this just look much nicer when they're super bright. So I actually still prefer the Peak 1000 mode, and I have to say that I didn't really notice the multi-logo detection dimming kicking in with regular HDR content. Now in a testing environment, this monitor reaches a maximum brightness of over 1000 nits in the Peak 1000 mode. And that's a great result, though you should probably take these numbers with a grain of salt as we've just discovered. The brightness numbers of the true black mode are reliable though, but this mode is much dimmer for window sizes below 10%. But when it comes to the color accuracy and luminance tracking, this mode performs really well and it's even more accurate than the Peak 1000 mode. Now for the best experience, you gotta use this monitor in a dimmed room, or at the very least make sure that there are no light sources directly behind you. This is a glossy panel, so reflections can be an issue. It's also curved, so any reflections will be stretched horizontally, making them even a bit more distracting. Generally, it's a good idea to avoid light from hitting the panel as much as possible, as this is a QD OLED after all. So whenever light hits the screen, blacks will appear grey with a magenta tint. A glossy, curved QD OLED is pretty much the worst panel you could use in a bright room, but in a dimmed room, this panel just looks amazing. Gaming or watching movies at night really is what these glossy QD OLEDs are built for. And yeah, in typical QD OLED fashion, this panel is able to put out some very saturated colors. It covers a color gamut volume of about 1.6 times sRGB, which is quite a large color gamut. And as a consequence, regular sRGB content will look oversaturated. With out-of-the-box settings, sRGB content really doesn't look very accurate at all. But there's a dedicated sRGB mode that gives us much better results. It's a pretty decent mode that does a great job keeping the color saturation under control, but the white point really could be better. Unfortunately, Alienware blocked the RGB controls in this mode, so we can't easily fix the white point ourselves. That's an even bigger issue in the DCI-P3 mode. This is super far off from the standard D65 white point, and the image has a very strong green tint. Alienware are probably targeting the DCI white point here that was meant for theaters, but it's not even hitting that. And frankly speaking, it doesn't make much sense to target the DCI white point on a monitor. Anyway, you're much better off using one of the gamer modes and adjust some settings. This actually gives us a pretty accurate P3 performance, which is nice to see. sRGB content still looks great, but of course we're getting a high delta E due to oversaturation. A full calibration and profiling fixes all of these issues and leads to almost perfect results for both sRGB and P3 content in apps that support color management. In case you don't have access to a colorimeter, you can download my ICC profile from the video description. And these are the settings I'd recommend using in conjunction with the ICC. So yeah, 240Hz 4K OLED is amazing. Who would have thought, right? This definitely is one of the most impressive monitors I've ever used. In a dimmed room, it's just amazing. There's no other panel that makes videos, movies, graphics and even text look this good while at the same time being that good for high frame rate gaming. But yeah, as much as I wish this was the perfect monitor for each and every use case, it does have its limitations. After all, we're talking about a glossy and curved QD OLED panel here, so you won't have much fun using this monitor in a very bright room. And yeah, the adaptive sync flickering also isn't great, and neither is the weird dimming behavior that Alienware for some reason don't allow us to turn off. However, I have to say that 4K and OLED really is a perfect match. The color fringing issues are basically solved at this pixel density. So high resolution OLED actually makes a lot of sense. Thanks for watching, bis zum nächsten Video.